Um, so the first thing to do is basically create the mesh. So we can start with a 2D mesh and then it's gonna ask uh, the objects. So let's start with the main plane. It's this guy and this guy, the top part of the main plane. And let's give it a six millimeters uh, mesh size. And um, all the other settings are okay. We have here curvature based size variation. So if you have a, a tiny a part in your like like here, we're gonna use this function f to fix this kind of face in the lower part of the main plane but for the top part is okay uh, we don't need uh, a small curvature for in order for the mesh to to correct itself during the process I mean 50 percent of our actual size is okay to, to fix any distortion so let's give a look how it looks like let's give it a try okay so now we have our 2d mesh it's it's looking okay as I said before um, don't have a it's not a complex geometry it's pretty much a plane so is not gonna be you don't need to be worried about this and I also would like to remember that we the 2d mesh cannot be created in a polygon body so even though I click it in the top I was selecting the sheet body so it's very important don't make the confusion between the polygons and the sheet bodies so the best thing to do and it's to delete the bodies that are not going to be meshed otherwise uh, the solution is not gonna load any result because there is bodies with no mesh asso associated to them so we need to delete all the bodies that we replaced by the sheet model and they are 26 so just 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 these two we want to keep 5 and 10 and the rest is all sheet sheet bodies so that means that for the others we can select the tube the top part of the main plane the other rib so all of them we can delete and you're gonna find them here in the excluded polygon bodies So now we have the model. So now our geometry is just composed by polygons that we are going to mesh. It's also important to say that we need to, when we created this mesh, uh, automatically was created a mesh collector. So we go here in mesh collector because this defines the property of this kind of 2D mesh. As, as we are going to see now so right click and edit we see that the type of this physical property for this mesh collector is a shell we don't want a shell we want a laminate because we're going to create composite materials from this uh, model so we see that there is no sh uh, shell property for this kind of uh, physical property is actually a laminate property so we can create one and we're gonna call it okay. 
laminate modeler for mesh. We need to change these variables. Stack and recycle is important to change. We want these properties have have a recipe inherited from the layup. Apply failure theory, very important step because this is going to define which kind of apply fa or failure index we're going to have in the so in the results. So we're going to choose maximum stress. and we're going to select uh, shear stress for bonding what's the limit for bonding for the bond to failure it's going to be 6 to 8 megapascals okay, so now we can proceed with creating the new meshes that we are going to apply in this in this sheet model Simply just go in 2D collectors and new 2D mesh. This object, this one, this tiny face, and this inner face. So now we have all our, our lower part of the main plane selected. We can say it's six again and here this model cleanup option of having a small uh, feature tolerance for some elements it's going to be important because this part here it's tiny it's around well i guess one millimeter thick so we should have this feature selected otherwise uh, a mesh of six millimeters will not um, represent will not fit in this part of the geometry but we're gonna see that's gonna be okay so five percent of the maximum element size that's the only uh, refining configuration that I think is necessary for this kind of geometry Going to apply, and as you can see, if we go in our selection filter, this function is very useful in MX uh, because sometimes it can get really, uh, really annoying to try to select something and not be able to. But if you go here and you say that you want to select an uh, element, it gets easier. So, this is one element. And uh, as you can see, the length is uh, way less than six millimeters. So this is a six millimeter edge length of the this element. And this, so this element, so this part of the geometry is well represented now. And so we do for the rest of our sheet bodies. So again. New 2D mesh. Now I can select for all of them, all the side sheets. So this, this, this one, and this one. Six millimeters also. Yeah. I mean, if you're not happy with your mesh, you can play with these parameters and find a compromise between between mesh detailing and efficiency but so for example here we have this square where is the hole here but this is not a problem for us at this point so we'll be okay then we should select our create another one for the tube that goes here inside six millimeters yeah 
as you can see it's okay if you want to be more refined it's easy just decrease the value of your element size okay so I have all the sheet part um, meshed we can just rename them so then they're not going to be lost this is tube these are side sheets these are lower main plane and these we can call top main plane so all mesh it important to remember that we need also mesh a mesh for the aluminium ribs this aluminium supports so we can go uh, 3d mesh for them like bodies this body and this body five millimeters okay I am happy with this give it a uh, 5% for the element refining option and apply let's see how it looks like Let's just change the color. This one, this one. Yeah, well, so just just so then you can see that it's a different kind of mesh. Okay, so it is meshed. As you can see, some elements are bigger than others because of that function that we that we selected where with the percentage of element size it's a pretty easy way to refine your your model but we can refine this even more I mean I, I believe it's maybe too detailed actually but well we're not we don't need to bother for this so I'm happy with this it should be enough for we create the composite layout now so this now is where it gets interesting so everything that we've done now is just preparing and creating the mesh to receive the composite layout 